So this is what we're gonna this is what we're gonna talk about before we get on there, okay? Uh huh. There's this lady. She uh I don't want to get a lady's business out, so I don't want to say no names and nothing like that. This ain't the church. Huh? You go ahead. No, man, I ain't going to do it like that, though. Yeah, no, I ain't going to do the lady like that. You put the business out. But anyway, this lady, right, she uh -huh. she, she up in a hotel. What's she doing in that hotel? Man, <laughs> i tell you this one. It's going to trip you out, but I just want to get y'all opinion on it. Mm -hmm. You know what? I think I'm going to wait till we get on the air. I ain't going to tell you right, right now. Okay. okay. Right. You sure you don't want before we get on the You know what? Y'all the best. Y'all are your woman in the hotel. Y'all just think all dirty. Hey, I didn't say anything dirty. I don't know what's going on. We don't get dirty. dirty. Pew. What, what's your mind with? Tell the truth. Uh, woman in the hotel. You know you. Some woman in the hotel, yeah. brother. Hmm. <laughs> it doesn't ever turn out. Oh, okay, great. Yeah, when you kind of start off the story like that, yeah, you know, that y'all need to quit that. Every church that grows starts at a hotel. It does. Hello. It starts at the storefront. <laughs> the storefront is after the hotel ballroom. <laughs> so you ain't doing what you ain't done. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. We we'll talk about we we'll get on there. Hold on. Hold on. Yeah. She recording. It's the Jody O. Johnson Show. It's on our five-minute discussion, and it's brought to you by Anthony King of Cars Stewart. Hey, you want a luxury ride? In-house financing. Help build your credit. Call 214-356-8706. That's 214-356-8706. Go see Anthony King of Cars Stewart today. And I'm telling you, he'll help you. He's been blessing a whole lot of people, all right? All right, now, Yolanda, you ready for the five-minute discussion? I think. Let's go. Listen, in the news, in the news recently, uh, Jennifer Lopez uh, is being interviewed with, by W Magazine, and she's having a discussion about her life and when, she, when she was a lot younger. Well, you, we know Jennifer Lopez is a very, very successful right. entrepreneur. Yes. Very wealthy woman. Mm -hmm. Okay? Well, how about this? She was homeless. At age 18, age wow. 18, she was homeless. Wow. I want to talk about that for a minute. Now, how did she end up homeless? Because she believed in what she wanted to do. She wanted to dance. She didn't want to go to college. She disagreed with her mom. and wouldn't want to stay, so she was at the dance studio sleeping on the couch. Pretty much how it happened. Okay? Mm -hmm. She was homeless. Now, I like that we're talking about this. You know, obviously she's successful, uh, you know, but I want to talk about it from a different perspective, Joe Yolanda. Okay, talk to me. Let's talk about it from homelessness when it's for God. Wow. Homelessness when it's for God. Now, what do I mean by that? I'm not God ain't told you to go and be homeless. Right. What I'm saying is you you live in a city, for example. Say I live in uh, I live in Jackson, Tennessee. Let's say Jackson, Tennessee, and I'm there and I'm watching TV and something, man. I see a ministry on television. Oh my God, he's awesome. The Lord told me. Right. Move, you know, <laughs> move that ladder, right. you know, move to Dallas, this is James the Potter's house, well, I... move to Houston, mm -hmm. whatever, you know, or a ministry comes to your city at a church and you see a guy and he's, and he's so excited, oh my God, right. Lord told me to follow him wherever he's going. Wow, yeah. Well, you do this, okay, but then you end up doing it and you end up homeless. I want to talk about that because that, that happens more than it doesn't. And I think it's something that we don't really talk about. You know, I, I had a true testimony of a woman we were casting. So we do filming a lot, and we sometimes we do open casting calls, and we have people to come out. And I remember one of the ladies, a beautiful lady, I mean, beautiful lady. I think she had five kids and whatnot. And when she came in there, she said, hey, Lord brought me all the way here from Cincinnati or some city like that. Mm -hmm. And she said she followed the ministry here. But she lost all of her money. She was staying in a hotel with five boys and like a like a wow. super eight, a one room super eight where the bed is right at the door mm -hmm. with five boys. Wow! And she began to cry, and but she was like, "But I know God told me to do this." And you know, everybody else in the room was looking at it like, "You put five <laughs> boys through that, right? Right? You run around here homeless, sleeping in a hotel." Because you say the Lord told you to come down here for a ministry? Yeah. 
I just want to ask you the question. Mm -hmm. Tell me, what you think of that? What do you think about it when people are led by God to do something and they end up homeless? Well, what you do know, you think about that? Well, you know, I think um, I think that God, there are plenty of examples in the Bible where God told someone to get up and go. He told Abraham, get out from, your, from among your kindred and go to a place that I will show you. But he didn't tell them right away. He didn't tell Abraham right away what he would be going through. He didn't tell him the end of the matter. So going in, I mean, it takes a lot of faith to go and move. And he now, now there might be some adversities. God will tell you what to do, but he won't give you the, the step by step until you move that step. And sometimes you go in and you say, well, God told me and everything is going to work out just fine. But you haven't gotten to the end of the matter. Because you could end up homeless, but God knows the end of that thing. And the end of that thing might be you're homeless today, but God may have a blessing for you further on. But see, now, I'm not the one that would say, you know, yeah. that God did or didn't tell you what to do. But there's also a wisdom in it as well. I how, how do you feel about it, though, when you hear a bunch of people... You know, because I don't think people that openly admit that they're homeless when they're right. doing stuff like that. So a lot of times you fake it and pretend it, you know, sleep right. on somebody's couch, right. show up dressed up in church, praying to the Lord, you know. But at the end of the day, you 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 going somewhere, you it ain't yours. Right. It ain't where you lay your head, you can't hang your clothes up. Right. You can't take a shower. Right. You ain't got a key to get in. That's right. It ain't yours. You know what I'm saying? So I'm... I'm I'm asking you how you how does that make you feel when you hear those kinds of testimonies? It makes me feel it, it makes me feel bad to be honest mm -hmm. because I believe in a lot of time a lot of times and I can't say like I said before what God told you but were you sure mm -hmm. that God told you you know that and and what was the confirmation because it makes me feel bad now that everybody seems to be in this mm -hmm. this press because God told you yeah. You know, and so when you say that God told you, you better be sure. It makes me feel really bad for him. Mm -hmm. And all I can, all you can do in that situation is encourage the person that you know. Well, I think this is what I believe. Look, like it's yeah, coming. Come to on, me. Yeah, come on, get this it. This is what I believe. I believe that the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. And if He indeed ordered your steps, He might have ordered you to that place, and you're homeless right now. But God can do something. At the end, and you're not going to end up homeless because the Bible is clear that the righteous do not beg bread. And his, I mean, the righteous are not forsaken and their seed doesn't beg, beg bread. Mm -hmm. But in this season, you might be homeless. But if you're the righteous and you believe God told you, mm -hmm. I believe God told you. But right. you better be sure. You better be sure. You might end up like Jennifer Lopez. You might, you might eight. End up, no, you might end up like old girl with the babies with five babies and yeah. super eight. You better make sure that the Lord told you that. Okay. And when, but the Bible does say that your steps are ordered. So your steps are ordered, and know that you're going to even come out of homelessness. I don't think homelessness is a permanent place for the for the saint. Okay. I think that you may be homeless at one point, mm -hmm. but homelessness ain't ain't it's not the permanent. Do place you think for God saint. intends for you to be homeless in the process of that transition? I don't. I don't. But I don't think that he because he provides where he. He guides. So that's what I believe. But, but there are a lot of sites. But there are a lot of sites. Because they say it. God told me to follow this ministry. Right. God told me to follow this preacher or this evangelist. Yeah, and you know what? And I I can't say that he didn't tell you that. But I know that God is provisionary. There are times that I've moved on, mm -hmm. the Lord told me this or that. Turns out the Lord didn't tell me this or that. Oh, yeah, you. you know, and we have to be honest that sometimes we miss God, but even when we miss God, mm -hmm. he is right there to pick us up from where we missed him. That's the thing. You can't have the pride to say, you know what? I might have missed God. I might be homeless because I missed God. And that's okay to say because don't nobody hear him perfectly. But there are times that I moved out like God told me and God didn't tell me that. But, you know, I can't say what God told you or not, but I do know that God it will not be your permanent place because the righteous is not forsaken and their seed doesn't beg bread. You will not stay homeless. I believe right. that. You know, I want to pause for, for this moment and I, I think I just want to pray for the, the, the homeless people who have to be homeless who can't tell nobody. Because a lot of time when you're homeless, you can't tell nobody. You got to kind of fake it and right. fool people. Because I remember how I fooled people when I ended up homeless oh, some yeah. time ago. I hit up so many I, I, I You know, I, I used John, I mean, John Madden saved my life. 
<laughs> you know, it, it was always a yeah. house with some men mm -hmm. waiting their turn to play, to play John, John Madden. Madden. So yeah. I always went over there like I was going to play John Madden, but I didn't want to play. <laughs> I let them skip me, and I was taking naps. I see. I was sleeping Smart on my man. on my turn and and washing up in the restroom. You know, but but you wouldn't openly tell anybody right. that you was homeless. You know what I'm saying? So there are people who are probably homeless because they, you know, went out there, trusted God, gave a bunch of money to a ministry, mm -hmm. got your kids homeless, and, you know, kids don't know when they're homeless. Right. You know what I mean? They just right. know I'm with my mom and my dad. I'm good. Yeah. You know what I mean? But those of you who are homeless, you follow God. I'm not going to question whether or not. They listen to God appropriately or not. I'm, I'm going to stay away from that. But I will say this. Think about that thing because you don't want to give yourself extra trouble that you don't have to have. That's right. But I'm going to pray for you anyway. Maybe you did it. Maybe you left for a ministry and you went to a city thinking something was going to happen. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Maybe you thought that you was going to quit what you was doing. You was going to walk up to Bishop Jakes and Bishop Jakes was just going to say, right. come on in. And mm -hmm. it didn't happen. Right. I'm going to pray for you. Lord God, touch him right. even now. The homeless person who is still trying to live out ministry, trying their best to keep their selves motivated and encouraged, even if they have kids or spouses counting on them, and they're running around doing whatever they have to do to survive. God, I just ask you to deliver them, God. Give them strength. Give them favor with somebody. Have somebody to touch them in a special way, Lord God. Give them a home, somewhere to lay their head so they can be effective in ministry, God. And if they if they are not where they're supposed to be, God, then give them the ability to suck up that pride and go back where they came and just face those folks that they wanted to convince that I'm doing what I'm doing. Lord God, give them the ability to admit that. But whatever it is, God, touch them. Keep them safe. Keep their babies safe. Yes, Lord. Lord God, in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, that wraps up the five-minute discussion. Right. I sure hate KB couldn't get in on I this know. one. But hey, it is what it is. Uh, we talked about it. Homelessness in ministry. When it happens, when you God tells you to do something, you do it, and you end up staying in a Super 8 hotel yeah. with five kids. Yeah. Or just not staying anywhere. Right. I mean, it happens. Yeah. You know what I mean? There's some really spiritual homeless people. Yes, and I believe that. I'm getting you running into a couple of them. Oh, yeah, because at, um, at the Potter's House, I work for the Guardian Ministry, yeah. and they come in every Sunday. You know, we go pick them up on buses, and we bring them back, and they go and enjoy service. We let them shower. We feed them. We make sure that they don't look homeless so that they can go into the service with some dignity. Yeah. You know, you don't want to go on service living homeless. Or so we make sure that they have clean clothes, they shower, we make sure that they're fed, and they go in to service. And a lot of these people, they love God. Now, I don't know all of their circumstances, but they love God and they love the service. And I believe that their faith ain't isn't any least in mine. I think they have as much faith as I do, and it's, the thing is they're homeless. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, a lot of these, a lot of these homeless saints is in Los Angeles and Atlanta, y'all. Y'all know. Right. Yeah, I'm from Los Angeles. That's the big city with the TV, the TV ministry. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's it. That wraps it up. Right. It's the Antonio Johnson Show, DFWI Radio, the five-minute discussion.